Hi everyone, thanks for the invitation. My name is Iman Medipur, VP Technology and Engineering at Carbon Beam and former project scientist at USA. Today, I'd like to, uh, to talk about the carbon bead technology and how this technology can contribute to decarbonization of construction materials uh, and uh, be a part of the solution. Before I talk about what we do, let me set this stage in, in terms of our motivation. I think everyone on this call is very aware of uh, concrete carbon impact and or need to find solutions. Fixing this problem at cement plant is tough. Uh, it requires lots of incremental changes, but anything substantial is hugely capital intensive and it's tough to, to implement. Alternatively, uh, there is an opportunity to solve this problem by making concrete with low carbon material by displacing cement with the low carbon material that they can react with the waste uh, carbon dioxide and get hardened by, by carbonation. There have been some attempts of using similar technologies uh, for the carbon dioxide utilization in concrete, but they are mainly expensive and uh, it requires high temperature or high pressure for process. The carbon bill technology, it, it converts the carbon dioxide into, into pre-gas uh, concrete components without compromising the performance. And it, it, the benefit of this process is twofold in terms of the environmental benefits. One is displacing cement with a substantial display, uh, substitution of cement with the low cost and low carbon materials like fly ash, slag. The second part, the second benefit is the permanent storage of carbon dioxide during this, during this process. And the combination of the CO2 avoidance and the CO2 and the CO2 uh, and the carbon dioxide storage uh, and the permanent carbon dioxide removal, it uh, it enables us to reduce the carbon intensity of the concrete by up to 80 percent. If you look at the manufacturing process of concrete, for example, the concrete masonry as an as an example for uh, for concrete component, is mainly made of. Uh, the, the mixed reason is mainly composed of sand, rock, cement, sometimes minimal content of fly ash uh, and other supplemented cement material. They mix together, they get uh, pressed during manufacturing process and after that they place in the curing chamber and exposed to steam curing. So the main reaction here is basically hydration of, of cement, which contributes to strength. During uh, the carbon bead process, we substantially displacing cement with other supplemented cement materials that they can react with uh, carbon dioxide like portandite and, uh, and also we use portandite during this process. They mix together uh, and they uh, undergo the same uh, they undergo the same manufacturing process. After that, they place into the curing chamber, but we use carbon the dilute carbon dioxide uh, uh, to cure and harden the concrete material. And uh, this, the source of this dilute CO2 could be from a fossil, fossil dry flue gas or biomass dry flue gas or even modular direct air capture. But the key, the key feature of this, of this process is it doesn't require any concentrated uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, it doesn't require high temperature or high pressure or any pressurization uh, during this process. It doesn't require any carbon capture step or any purification as well. So regarding the reaction mechanism of, of the carbon bead technology. So as I, as I mentioned, the portanol is the primary for the study. It has a high tendency to get, to get carbonated and it offers, uh, when it reacts with carbon dioxide, it forms limestone, which can uh, offer cementation in concrete. And also because of the increased volume during this reaction, it refines the porosity. So this reaction mechanism in, in all process is, the, is based on the activation of the carbonation and hydration. So during carbonation curing, we have the simultaneous hydration and uh, carbonation activation. And also after carbonation curing process, we have a subsequent hydration process as well. So this carbonation activation accelerates the LH uh, strength gain. Uh, this is mainly because of uh, formation of calcium, calcium carbonate, which is intermixed with the hydration products, uh, CSH. And because of the elevated temperature of the incoming fluid gas, we can further uh, activate the hydration reaction as well. 
Uh, one thing I would like to touch to touch here is that this LDH carbonation and accelerated carbonation process is different from natural cement uh, carbonation. Uh, so the natural carbonation could be detrimental to reinforced concrete uh, because this uh, natural carbonation actually uh, takes place in the, in the mature concrete and it causes irreversible change uh, of pH. And uh, the, redu the, the reduction of the pH can actually depassivate de uh, and reduce the stability of the passivation layer. And it can, it could con uh, uh, detriment, it could contribute to the carbonation induced corrosion. But for the accelerated carbonation, more specifically for the carbon bit process, because we are externally adding uh, calcium hydroxide, this calcium hydroxide is actually acts, the remaining calcium hydroxide after carbonation acts as a, uh, as a buffer to maintain pH. And uh, it also can contribute to further posonic reaction as well. So uh, Carbon Build had, uh, has completed two uh, pilot demos uh, to demonstrate uh, uh, the process at a scale uh, and do risk the technology. The, the first one was at ITC uh, uh, drug fork station last summer. That was as a part of the X-Prize competition as well. So we formed around 10,000 of concrete blocks. Uh, during this process, and we directly use the flue gas uh, from coal fire power plant without any carbon capture step. The second uh, pilot demonstration was at Entry Percy, that's a, a national carbon capture step, uh, not national carbon capture center in <laughs> Alabama. Um, and uh, we were able to have access to both uh, coal and natural gas, fire flue gas, uh, to, uh, to evaluate or process at the very, very, very dilute uh, carbon dioxide uh, concentration, like 4% for natural gas, and also evaluate the robustness of a process with respect to environmental conditions. Some high-level overview of our results. This, this results uh, are for first demonstration at ITC as a part of our express competition. So we uh, we produce around 150 tons of concrete blocks uh, over 12 batches, and the CO2 uptake was around three tons overall, uh, mainly two percent, basically two percent uh, by mass of solid, which translates to around like one pound per block, which is quite a good number actually, and uh, we. So of course the uh, the concrete blocks they all fulfill the the, the ASTM specifications. Uh, for example, the strength data has uh, has shown, uh, shown here. You can see they all fulfill the strength uh, uh, criteria of fourteen megapascal for concrete blocks. We uh, we evaluated in detail the the properties of uh, concrete components by uh, NCMA and MBCC National Masonry Concrete Association and Master Builder Solution to uh, to do uh, actually to verify the performance uh, and detailed characterization of uh, of the concrete of these concrete blocks that they hardened by carbonation process. But in addition to that, we also work with uh, ICCES, International Code Council, Code Council, to develop the acceptance criteria and publish, uh, publish the, the compliance report. So the public, so the development of this, uh, com this code compliance uh, and this uh, code compliance report is actually can facilitate the, the use of this new material. And that's a prerequisite uh, for, uh, Need prerequisite need uh, to to introduce new material and use new material for the real uh, for uh, for construction applications. Uh, with that, I would like to conclude my my presentation by by providing some high level overview of the core technology development. So. Basically, we started uh, in 2014 at UCLA uh, as a proof of concept and running lots of experiments and making um, and make and make uh, we published lots of papers in this in this topic. After that, we were able to raise funding from uh, by, from DOE. Uh, they got very very interested in our technology, and we were uh, we were able to fabricate and design uh, our pilot scale and uh, demonstrate or uh, this technology at the scale uh, at two different uh, sites as I already explained. And uh, right now uh, we raise another, we secure another funding from DOE again to basically expand our product uh, portfolio by transition from uh, concrete mason associate, uh, the concrete masonry blocks to uh, other precast components like holocryst labs. And also we are 
designing or first uh, we are designing or uh, the commercial scale system and uh, we are in the middle of discussion for the full scale conversion and integration of or of this technology at the real uh, conduit block plant this year thank you for your attention <laughs>